Hello. It is Tuesday. Right? Who knows at this point what day it is. We are in week three. Again. Who knows. <laughs> um, welcome to Mark Draws in the Afternoon working title. Uh, let me know if you can hear me okay. I think the volume is fine. Um, we are still doing fan art. I thought I would have been done with the pencils by now. It took me ages to do these. Um, and all I've, I've just managed three in a bit. But you got your faves. You got all your favourites. Squirrel Girl. The comic skate favourite character, Squirrel Girl. You've got Ron Mother Flopping Swanson. Uh, my Splatoon character, everyone's favourite Splatoon character. And then a little bit of plug from the Bass Street Kids from the Beano. Everyone loves the Beano. Gloomy Gus in the chat, just trolling, just straight up trolling. My Gloomy Gus is gonna get kicked. He doesn't behave himself, Mr. Potentially John Allison, I think that's John. I forget who everyone's name is. Uh, still no music because Twitch told me off. So I will listen to some music. And you can't. Um, will it be scrams? It will 100% be scrams. Um, I normally draw in Clip Studio, but I like penciling in Procreate. I don't know why when I'm mucking around with this stuff, it feels a little bit more don't know, not, not necessarily fun, but it seems a bit more fluid. Um, let's make sure the... Oh yeah, that's good. Last time it was all pixely, the zoom, but that's not too bad. Um... So yeah, I'm going to carry on drawing Plug from the Bass Street Kids for a little while. And I'll move, I'll move on to a fresh, hot new character. Uh, how is everyone in the chat? Uh, if you've got any Beano memories... <laughs> let me know. Uh, the Beano was like my... One of my favourite comics as a kid. Like, I guess with everyone's. Um, I don't know if it ever made me laugh, though. Uh, yep, the Dennis Mayer's fan club. <laughs> Uh, with the big badge, the Nasha badge with the googly eyes. Yeah, I had the hairy badge too. I was in the Desperate Dan fan club as well, even though I didn't really like the dandy that much. It's a fake fan. I did some work for the Beano, um, but it wasn't very good. And they didn't pay very well. Um, it was for... They asked me to do, like, a take on Club Penguin, which I don't know if people remember what Club Penguin is. Club Penguin was this, um, I guess, like a, like a website video game hybrid. Um, so they were like, oh, can you do, like, like penguins who go to a club? And I was like... I guess I guess I could. Or the people who dressed up as penguins and go to a club, like it's a club penguin. Um, so I did that. I recycled some jokes from a previous penguin comic that I did. Um, 
And yeah, it's, it is what it is. I was hoping to get Dennis the Menace right off the bat. I didn't let old Ella Bubs draw Dennis the Menace right off the bat, unfortunately. Uh, Corky the Cat was better than Toxic Male Desperate Dan, while John is hitting his kind of promo on Desperate Dan. What's wrong with Desperate Dan? He's got his nan, or aunt. I assume it's his nan, could be his aunt. And he's just this big klutz that goes around destroying everything. Demanding pies. Cow pies were lame. Cow pies were not lame. Cow pie is the nation's favourite. When this is all over, when Covid's over, we'll be back. Back on the cow pies. I don't know if pug, plugs, plug? Plug. I don't know if his hat makes much sense. I don't think the beaner that winds me up. So this is going to be a bit of a beaner rant. Is that they just, nothing makes sense in 2020. No one has this app. Uh, I'm trying to think who else was in the dandy. Was it Beryl the Peril? Was she a, was she a dandy? Because there was always like, like the dandy equivalent of the stuff that was in the Beano. There was Beryl the Peril in the dandy. And that was like the little me and the minx in the Beano, right? I don't know why they just don't bring Desperate Dan back in the Beano. Have him just hanging about, eating a cow pie. He could open his own like American diner serve nuclear, f nuclear food to the Beano kids. Desperate Dan is the first three letters of Dandy. Mm. I see what they did there, he's brand specific, yeah he is. But he's also not being used. Oh, I feel like it's time for someone to bring him back. It's time for an outlaw Desperate Dan comic. Power violence is his new thing. I don't know, I don't know just the people to work on it. It's going to be black and white. Maybe a splattering of red ink. Nothing but zip tone. Anyway, I'm, I'm often amazed about how the Beano characters haven't changed in like 200 million years. Um, what I like about the Beano artists, that they, I think they still hire all of them. I think it's the same people drawing it as it was when I was a kid. I like the ones that where it looks really gross. Like a like a real like intricately drawn gross drawing. But I, I don't know who the artists are because DC Thompson were terrible at um giving credit to people. I wanna say Leo Baxendale, I think that's the only name I know. But I think that's because he's quite active on Twitter, if that's the person I'm thinking of. Uh, Desperate Dan is the kind of aughts hipster with his cowboy style. You'd see people like that at ATP. Rest in peace. ATP. What I liked about ATP is that they were all like noble people who treated people with respect. Especially, not just musicians, but the fans. Still, 
maybe that's because I'm bitter that that Jabberwocky festival didn't go ahead, and it was the most Mark Ellaby brand like festival ever. But because it was like a Mark Ellaby like favorite bands ever, it's probably why I didn't sell many tickets. That arm's not good. Um, Leo Baxter is dead, but Lou Stringer, I think, is active. I think I am thinking of Lou Stringer. Lou Stringer, I think, is the chap I see at conventions who seems very nice. But I think Baxendale was the one who... Um, I'm going to Google that. I'm going to do some hot live Googling. Yeah, Leo Baxendale is the chap I was thinking of. If you do Google Leo Baxendale, um, he's got that sort of like almost. No, it's not it's not sketchy, but it's definitely less refined than the other chaps. A lot more life to it. Um, ask right, Johnny. What was your meeting like with Barry Hogan at ATP? Or is that going to be a off-stream story? If we're ever allowed out again for our dinners, for our tea, for our cow pie dinners, you can uh, tell me. Johnny can't cut a promo on Twitch. It's not very really outlaw, is it, Johnny? Um, I am enjoying enjoying these fan arts. However, they <laughs> they have taken me away from actual work work uh, work that I'm not quite ready to show yet. But I have been I have been working on some Noonan stuff, as well as some Rick and Morty stuff. When I realised I had a stream to do, I was like, oh, I better start drawing some fan art. I did not leave myself enough time, so everything's a bit rushed. But that, that's not a bad thing. Um, how was everyone's weekend? I, I imagine everyone's weekend was similar to how everyone's weekday is. Um, what did I, what did I do? Um, I watched all the Oceans films. Eleven, which is good. Twelve, which is still quite bad. And thirteen, which isn't needed at all, but enjoyable. You could probably just watch Eleven again. Uh, fan art is how you get paid. Hmm. It is, unfortunately. In in today's nostalgia-driven market, if you can draw something that people re recognise, you're made for life. You're, you're set for life. Um, my scrams has now turned into a waxahachi, which wasn't what I was going for.
Don't want to get sad. Don't want to get sad on stream. Plug is done. Plug is done. I always want to give him pug, but it's not his plug. Trying to give him some more like gross beano fingers. Cool. I'm now going to draw Usagi Yojimbo, a comic which I have not read. Uh, the most I know about Yosagi Ojimbo is from the Ninja Turtles comic, or cartoon, sorry. I've got, like, so much respect for Stan Sakai, though, because he's been doing this character for what seems like forever. And he's been allowed the, I don't know, the freedom to do what he wants. Sometimes think about like, could that be like done today? Like, is there a comic of like an original comic character of today that will last like thirty years and publishers will just go, you can do what you want, whatever you want. Um, I'm going to try and keep this stream a little bit like looser than most because I'm going to just be drawing a lot of like rough stuff. Um, I think I spent about like 25 minutes just doodling Squirrel Girl just to try and get like um, like the face that I wanted and like because my, my drawing style is so like big eyes and it's very like ultra cartoony. And to get that, like, to get a character like Squirrel Girl who has such, like, a distinct style drawn by someone else, like Erica Henderson or Derek Charm, and then translating that into my style, like, oh, it takes me a little bit of time to get going with it. I can't quite process it. Like, it looks wrong, but it's not wrong, it's just in my style. And I'm like, it doesn't, doesn't look as good because it's not drawn by the people whose work I really like. Is drawn by this guy. What I'm saying is, I'm a big old emo. So yeah, this might not be the face we go with.
I always felt bad about Isagi Yojimbo because he's essentially tied up his ears, which can't be very pleasant. I wore my face mask out earlier today. Um, and that sort of, that sort of hurt my ears a little bit. So, this guy literally tying his ears up, this must be, this must be horrible. Does he have whiskers? <laughs> uh, Johnny says, the pain reminds him he's alive in a world of fear and pain. Hmm. I'm just looking at the old Usagi Ojimbo drawings. It's quite, it's interesting to see like how his style has sort of remained the same. The, the look of the characters change, but I think he's like one of those cartoonists who found his path quite early on or his style quite early on and kind of just stuck to it. Anyway. There we go. I'm just trying to see what his kimono looks like. Gotta get, gotta get the brand accuracy. Zoom that a little bit. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, he's looking at a big carrot, John. No, he's looking at his sword, mate. Oh, you mean what's he looking at off brand? He's supposed to be looking at us, the viewer. I want that to be a little bit chunkier. Collar. Sometimes he has two swords.
Uh, the wizard log has logged in. How you doing, wizard log? Um, that's not actually that bad a drawing. I don't know if I keep two swords, but... Uh, I am well. Yeah, I'm good today. What have I done today? Did loads of laundry. Exciting, isn't it? The, ex the exciting life that we all lead now. Um, Uh, yeah, wall wash today, Johnny. Uh, I have to go to the lingerie. Because um, we can't, we find we can't dry our clothes properly because we have such a small flat and we don't have a garden. Um, so um, I went to the lingerie and it was fine to begin with. There's no one in there. And then I sort of, this is a very boring story. I just realised, we'll carry on. Um, stuff me stuff in the, tumble dryer, came back half an hour later, place was full of people not keeping two metres apart. Hated it. And all my stuff had been taken out because it had been done and it had been dumped to the trolley and I had to then sort that out. Did tell you a very boring story. I'm sure Ninja doesn't bang on about his laundrette adventures. Um, and it was just such a, such a, such a uh, confined space and no one was like moving. Everyone was just sat there quite next to each other and they were all quite elderly and there was me, face mask on, panicking, trying to get out. I do need a washer dryer, Johnny. I also need a house, but we we will talk about that another time. There's definitely less drawing in this stream. What I might do is I might do some inking. I'm going to leave uh, Princess slash General Leia for another time. Um, oh, wrong button every time. Uh, I'm going to... Yeah, let's shove this in Clip Studio and do some inking for a bit and I can zone out a little bit. Oh, I think I've done the far wrong. We'll see. It's not a professional stream. We've been over this many times. Yeah, I did the file wrong. Let's save it and then go back. I love the iPad. Oh, it did work. Okay, that's cool. No, I don't want to see the news. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Um, I much prefer inking in Clip Studio than I do in Procreate. Uh, I'd like to give myself more work to do. So I like to transfer files <laughs> live on stream. Okay. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. Let's, uh, yeah, let's ink older Ronnie Swanson. Uh, let's make sure all my brushes are right. Okay, cool. Now there are some people out there who like Parks and Recreation but don't like the final episode. And I don't understand why they don't like it. Like, it's fine.
every character got what they wanted in a show where the characters get what they want. Uh, I thought the Good Place finale was that as well, but that didn't get such a kick in. What did I think of Bojack's last episode? I thought Bojack's last episode was good. In a season that was maybe rushed a little bit. Um, they obviously had stuff to tie up, didn't they? But I really liked that it was essentially the four or five main characters. It was the main cast. Each got a wrap-up. Bojack kind of got what he deserved. He maybe should have had a... There was a lot of stuff about he he was going to die in the last episode, or the episode before, and I guess in his in his mind he did. Um, I got, oh, I guess spoilers for Bojack Horseman. Um, it was a dense... Yeah, it was, it was very dense. Um, it was like they wanted to pack three seasons into one. Um, I don't mind that though. I think it's had slightly longer than previous seasons. Like in terms of like episodes. But I, I, I thought it was much better than the season before. I thought Hollyhock got a bit of a raw deal, but if they had added any more story into that season, I think it would have burst. Um, Bojack will remain one of my favourite shows. It is. It is unlike anything I've ever seen in that it's very, it's very, it's very goofy in that it doesn't shy away from doing like puns and dumb animal stuff. Um, but at the same time, man, has there, has there been anything about like mental health like, like this in a, in a TV show? It's, I mean, it's, it's brutal. It, it's, it's, it's so brutal in places. Uh, my favourite scene is still the season three finale, like the, the last like bit where um, the um, Nina Simone song plays over Bojack finding the the runners of the, the the horses that are running. I cannot, will not uh, watch that without crying my eyes out.
Uh, I think I'm going to add some zip tone uh, to all this. Uh, am I going to watch the new Nick Offerman show? Starts to speak on BBC Two. No, is this is this a bit, Johnny? Is this one of your J Johnny Japes, Jelly Japes? Devs. No, I've not heard of this. Is this a, is this is this British? Is it American? He did pop up in an episode of Gilmore Girls the other day that I watched, and well, perfect. I think Nick Hoffman can do mostly anything, and it's good. Oh, I didn't, I didn't watch his stand up because I heard it was is bad. If anyone wants to guess about Gilmore Kills, I'm <laughs> I'm here for that. I've not I've not heard of this Debs though. I'll have to check it out. Oh, Johnny's got a synopsis. Uh, Devs is a slow, beautiful sci-fi drama thriller about a machine that can see backwards and forwards in time, back to Christ on the cross, forward to some looming, unknowable crisis. It grapples with all the big questions. Is there such a thing as free will? Do we live in a multiverse? Could we all be part of a complex simulation? Depends how long it is. If, it, if it's short, I'll watch it. <laughs> You know what I am uh, into is the half hour dramas. More of them, please. I say drama. I'm going to start talking about The Mandalorian, um, which is essentially just a child's TV show. Um, but The Mandalorian has a good time length 35 minutes, I think, is, is about the right sort of time for them episodes. Johnny cutting promos on Gilmore Girls. Well, Robin will not be happy. Just gonna storm through that door. <laughs> Just gonna storm through that door and rip up every issue of Giant Days that I have.
Cool. Is that, is that done? Yeah, it's done. Throw some screen tone and it will look great. Uh, and do my Splatoon character now. So I looked the other day at my uh, Switch, because it tells you how long you've been playing video games for. Um, well, games on the Switch. Um, and I've pumped in 900 hours into Splatoon, which I think is a full month. And when you say that out loud, what could I, <laughs> what could I have done in that month? If you if you were told you could have a month to do anything in the world. Like the possibilities, you know. Learn to learn to bake bread properly. Take up a musical instrument properly. Watercolor. A new language. Well, learn a language you don't know. Not make a. Yeah, make more comics. But yeah, with those nine nine hundred hours, would any of that have included? Um, playing Splatoon. I do not regret it, but when you say it out loud. Uh, well. Wait, did I have to wipe the dust off it first? Whoa, there's some promo cutting on the Switch. I love my Switch, I play it all the time. Uh, the Switch is essentially what got me back into video games. Because I didn't have a console and I didn't I didn't have like a TV because I lived like with my dad. Um essentially um I didn't have room for one. So the the Switch was great because I could just play it handheld. Um am I a multi docker? I like playing it. Yeah, now I've got an actual uh, TV. Um, I like playing uh, both on TV and handheld, but uh, Splatoon I have to play handheld because I use them. Um, I don't know what they call it, gyro controls? Motion controls? It's when you aim, isn't it? Um, but I prefer playing Breath of the Wild uh, on the big telly. The like indie titles, anything that's like an eight bit or sixteen bit like homage, like uh, Enter the Gungeon, um, etc. I like playing uh, handheld. So I don't know why. Oh, there's a mention of uh, the comic Blood Blokes. Well. Funny you should mention Blood Blokes, and you may be thinking, I remember that comic. Oh, I wonder what the creator of Blood Blokes is up to nowadays. My good, my good pal, Adam Cadwell, and and you go on his social media in the hope that there's there's new Blood Blokes comics or some drawings of any kind. Well, if if you were hoping for that, and instead found his multi-part series where he he is playing a version of himself reading Shakespeare in the bath or on the loo it's the it's the the treat you didn't know you wanted Hopefully, my good pal will one day return to comics, because he is a very good drawer. Uh, one of the best. Hmm. Uh, 
Oh, why is Cadbell never in the Twitch chat? It's, it's too early for him. I think. Four in the afternoon, is he up yet? Uh, I'm trying to remember these platoon hair, because essentially the hairs are squid. Well, they are squids, but they're like all tentacly. I've got the weird bits underneath. Yeah. Gloomy Gus 1999. Uh, you have to get up early to make some comics. I rise at 7 a.m., drink some comics juice, and then get drawing by 5 p.m. I'm virtually blind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I found um, when um, I found keeping a, a nine till well, I used to keep nine till seven when I was on, when I was on uh, Rick and Morty or. 10 to 7 sometimes. You've got to have that early schedule I think as you get older. Not that I was ever the sort of person who would pull all-nighters but it's uh, as you get older it gets tougher and tougher and tougher to stay off anything past 11 o'clock so let alone like you know sitting down to draw a page. I started around about nine o'clock this morning. Did some writing, did a lot of thinking today. I don't. Days when you just have to think are so weird because you've got nothing to show for it, but sometimes you just gotta like uh, sit around. Like I just watched some Rick and Morty episodes because that was my research. And I was like, this isn't work. I've got nothing to show for it. I think that's why I put off doing my own comics for so long, because it was just thinking, and I was like, oh, I'm just thinking, I'm not, I'm not getting anything done, I've got no, nothing to show for it. Whereas like, if someone's drawn you a, or sorry, if someone's written you a script, then you're good to go, aren't you? Like the work, the work gets done quicker. Can you imagine doing a 24 hour comic now? I'll, no, I can't. I've never even... A, I've never done one. Um, because I think I would faff around too much. Um, but, yeah. Not a, a ripe old age. Yeah. 
No, Johnny, don't do it. Don't please don't attempt it. Those are young person's games. I did the hourly comics, and they were fun. Until you just realise it's the same thing, like every year. But there, if, if there's any aspiring creators out there, those sort of initiatives are quite good if you're starting out. Uh, the idea of um, hourly comic day is that you essentially draw a comic for every hour that you're awake. And at the end of it, you've got like a nice, you know, a nice little narrative. Um, and 24 hour comic is when you essentially, in theory, you're supposed to do a page an hour. So you've got like a 24 page comic by the end of it. You also have to stay awake. Which I was always against. I was like... Can't you just do it in, like, halves? <laughs> Can I do it, like, to 12-hour comics? Uh, yeah. Uh, Johnny says, 24-hour comics or hourly comics builds up some strength. But the comics are often boring. But it, it does, like you've just said, it does make you speed up a bit. It, realize, it makes you realise what you can cut from your drawing. Maybe I should attempt one. I mean, if I remember rightly, Johnny, you did your um, hourly comic. Was it at the lake? So you had a few other people with you? The, the 24 hour comic one, that would be, um, yeah, that was the lakes, was that with Dan? Yeah. I feel like if you draw it with other people, you can kind of like feed off their energy a little bit. Hello to Gav in the chat. How are you doing, buddy? How was your weekend? Ah, oh, so yeah. Uh, the Lakes International Comics Art Festival. Very long name. Um, they do, I'm not sure they still do it, but for a while it was essentially part of their like um, festival where they would have, they would host a um, 24 hour comic where I'm not sure if members of the public could come and watch you draw, um, but essentially at the end of it they would, um, excuse me, draw the comic and then, then the lakes would print it and that was available to be bought at the festival. Um, but yeah, along with Johnny, it was Dan Berry. Emma Vichelli, Richard Short, and Jonathan Edwards, and Jade Sarson, which is a great sort of gang of people. Uh, I, I, it, people you were sequestered. Drunk artists wandered in. Oh, that sounds fun. <laughs> I 
I can't quite figure out where the fun goes. Is the fun going to go there? Let's pop it there. Someone will tell me if I've drawn a fun wrong. Definitely needs moving up, that's for sure. There we go. Um, how's my weekend? Uh, Gav asks. Um, it was a bit of a non-event, really. Um, I did a bit of writing on Sunday. Um, I, I wrote a Chloe Noonan comic. Um, just sat down, bashed it out, ten pages. Um, a little story I've had in my head for a couple of days, and then I was like, yeah, gonna gonna just get the script written. I say script, it was just mainly the dialogue, it was just like uh, me hitting the beats so when I go to thumbnail it I know what I'm playing with. Oh Johnny's telling a story. Uh, so going back to the 24 hour comic uh, event at the lake, starring Cook, rocked up at 2am, filled his pockets with egg sandwiches, then returned half an hour later, put his hands in his pockets, <laughs> and drew them out covered in egg mayo, he'd forgotten they were there. Darwin, no! <laughs> one of the... one of the... <laughs> one of the all-time comics greats, covered in egg sandwiches, egg mayo, oh, grim. Oh, what a brilliant artist. Cool, that's the uh, ink up your sagi or jimbo. I was gonna say if you've got some new people watching, um if you don't mind smashing that follow button. Cause I need I need some more followers um in order to go up a grade in Twitch. Um it enables me to um do a little bit more with the channel. Um, which would be great. I've done most of the things they've asked me to do. Uh, thank you to Gloomy Gus, Gloomy Gus 1999 for that follow. Thank you, buddy. Uh, I promise not to spam your email with notifications. I only stream twice a week when I remember. Oh no, I like that line. Uh, is that line I was trying to get rid of? But yeah, no, I'll go back to Twitch. Um, I've done most of the things they've asked me to do. Um, I have to stream for so many hours. Which is kind of infuriating. It's like, I think, 80 hours, I think, in the first month. They really, I mean, they, I can see, I can see why some pro streamers burn out. There was a, I think, an article on Polygon recently about, there was a bit of an exodus of Fortnite streamers going from Twitch to Mixer. And they were talking about essentially the, the burnout that they get, which I thought was a load of old rubbish to begin with. 
that is, is essentially their job. Um, and I'd have to like turn down certain things that they wanted to do or sponsorships because I just couldn't fit it in because I just had to stream all the time. Anyway, don't feel sorry for them because they're all millionaires and they're all young. Ah, oh, too young. I might try and look in somewhere else. Twitch is the enemy of love. You have to leave room for love in your life, says Gloomy Gus. What true words have been spoken? Uh, you Yusagi you Jimbo has like a couple of like circles on his kimono. So you've got you've got to get them right. All the Yusagi stands are gonna come at you. They'll, they'll be after you. Uh, pro question from Mark, have you ever used a French curve ruler? Uh, let me remind myself what a dang French curve ruler looks like. No, but I have one. Um, I have one, it is my uh, granddad's. Um, my granddad used to draft, my granddad used to do uh, drawings for Ford. Uh, motor company, and I got a bunch of his stuff when he passed. No, but I've never used one. Um, would why? Would it uh, would it improve my art? Have you used one, Johnny? Um, what would you use a French curve for? I think that's always been my, like, setback, is that I, I know it, they exist, because every damn comic artist talks about them, but I, I just don't know what I'd use it for, in, in what scenario.
drawing the edges of round arches on buildings, like when you have to follow the third shape. Oh, 3D shape, sorry. Right. Uh, no, so I've never used one. I feel like a lot of that stuff I wish I'd learned, like you say, earlier. Yeah, no, I do struggle with a, a rounded edge. Um, when I draw digitally, um, the rounded edge is the one thing that I'll always like undo like several times and then try and try and try again. Um, and the one that I go with is is possibly the one that I'm just like exasperated by because I'm like, oh, that will do because it's it doesn't look any different than like the first one you did. Is this in your mind's eye? You're always like, oh, I can do better. Ooh, bad bad tangent on that line I just did. Oh, well, that's a question for the chat. Tangents. So in comics. Um, there's a thing called tangents, essentially when you have one line kind of like going up against another line and it creates a tangent. Uh, I'll do an example. So if you were drawing like, drawing yourself a little chat. And then essentially you would have like not that, but say say you did like the neck like that, or like the hand. Ah, it's the hand coming in like that. I I never really noticed tangents until they were pointed out to me, and now I can't I can't unsee them. But I do wonder if a tangent is something that a normal comic reader would ever be able to point out. I think I've seen someone mention it once in a review. I think it was Oliver Saver from the AV Club mentioned it on Twitter. I think he, he posted a drawing and he was like, but oof, that tangent. And before then, I've, I've just never noticed them. And now I can't unsee them. And I found when I'm drawing digitally, I, I seem to make them all the time. <laughs> it's like my, my pen will just want to go towards the corner. Like it, will, like it will always want to go to there. And I'm like, no, don't go to there. That's a tangent. I literally just did it again. But... I don't know. There's a thing we used to get told off, when well, you get told off for doing it uh, on Rick and Morty, but one of uh, Cartoon Network's big things were like, you just can't do tangents, can't have tangents in the artwork. Um, I did loads of them, and they never, they never said anything. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think I don't think readers see them. I think you'd, if if you were hunting them down, I think you'd be able to pick them out. Not something a common reader would spot. Only those who review or overanalyze. Yeah, or if you if you know what you're looking for, like a trained eye, maybe. Um, and the yeah, edge, Johnny says they are inherently ugly. They are. Yeah, they are. But sometimes, sometimes they just happen. Cool. Let's hydrate and let's go and plug.
Yeah, I'm drinking more Jesus blood. Well, it was Easter, so... If you can't drink e Jesus blood, then when can you? Johnny, have you thought about doing streaming or like Instagram live drawing videos or anything like that? I feel like it's something that artists like need to do nowadays. Uh, the Grand Master himself, Daniel Warren Johnson, has just started a YouTube channel where he's gonna stream and do like he says he's gonna do like like lessons, maybe like tutorials and stuff, which sounds amazing. Learning from that guy would be incredible. Uh, Johnny says he did drawing streams about 10 years ago. Brag. Uh, but he finds it so distracting that I can't do a single decent line. No one needs to do it, he says. I, 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 when I say needs to do it, it feels like it's an, exten an extension of uh, the, the, the social media and you know promotion and presence and stuff. Um, I stream because I actually quite enjoy it. I don't get a, a huge amount of viewers, but I, I, I enjoy talking, even if I'm just talking to <laughs> essentially my computer uh, for an hour and a half. It's, it's nice to um, it's nice to break up the day a little bit. I don't know what I'll do um, after this quarantine is lifted. I think I'll still stream. I don't know. I, I thought about doing other things like having guests on. And we just we just draw for an hour or something. But I think the work that would entail puts me off a little bit. I'd much rather just crack on with the drawing. Let's bring that armpit up. I'll do the same on the other side. Beano characters are weird to draw. They're, they're so like anti how I draw <laughs> normally. They've got so, so many weird shapes to it. Not a bad thing at all. It's, it's just not the way my brain is processed. I don't know. Uh, Gav says, even, uh, sorry, well, even talking to a computer can keep you sane. As long as the computer's talking back, that's fine. <laughs> sorry, zooming in a little, a little bit there, sorry.
Yeah, that's not bad. That's not a bad plug. Try and give him some more Baxendale grossness. It's so hard because like my style is such such a clean line. Let's do some texture. That'll do. That'll do. Okay. Yeah, we'll do a bit of squirrel girl and then. Stop, it's half five now. Ooh. I was talking earlier about how difficult I found getting the squirrel girl face. Um, essentially basing a drawing in my style off of um, uh, a character who, who has been drawn by someone with a very distinct style like Erica Henderson, it, it kind of flipped my brain a little bit. Um, every line I was making I was like, this doesn't look like how Squirrel Girl looks, but in reality it was more like, oh this doesn't look like Erica Henderson's drawing so it must be wrong. Um, it took me a couple of, like, maybe like half hour to an hour, <laughs> just trying to like, figure it out. And then, like, when I was drawing it, I was, like, thinking, like, oh, I would never get marble work. <laughs> it was such... I was like, I would never get, like, you know, marble work drawn like this. I'd have to change me style up to get old Joe Crusada interested. Uh, comic fans might be interested in a, uh, a YouTube show, uh... I think it's called Drink and Draw. Um, I don't. I think Dave Johnson. Um, I think organizes it. Dave Johnson did all the uh, hundred bullets covers, and drew the uh, Super Patriot series for Eric Larson. Um, I think I think Drink and Draw is his baby, and maybe Dan Pan Pansanon Pan Pansion. Can't pronounce it. But um, Joe Casado goes on there. Uh, I think nearly every time. Um, it's on YouTube. But he had uh, Dan DiDio on there quite recently, uh, who recently left DC Comics. And whereas I have a very, like, I don't know, ill view of the big two, as it were, uh, it, uh, D Johnny says it's pronounced uh, Dan Panacean, that's it. Um, so yeah, even though I have a very sort of like, I know, ill view of the, the big two of their monopoly and stuff, it was actually quite interesting to hear them two talk, Dan Dio and Joe Quesada, essentially being two, like the same role but at like different companies, who have had this like rivalry, um, essentially for the last, well, forever. Um, but Dan talking about like, you know, Curate, so creative failures within DC was quite interesting, and how they put like so much energy into uh, the new Fifty Two um, that they didn't leave any creative energy left over for Year Two of uh, the new Fifty Two. I thought it was like actually quite interesting, and obviously the only thing that's. The, that's the type of thing you can only say is when you leave a company. But well worth checking out. I think it's only a half, an hour and a half long. They talk about baseball for a little bit, so your mileage may vary, but if you've got an interest in comics, definitely check it out.
Uh, Squirrel Girl is a great comic from Marvel Comics, written by Ryan North, drawn by Eric Anderson, and then drawn by Derek Charm. And uh, Derek's artwork, I think, is great. I think Eric, Eric is really good as well. Um, obviously, Derek took over from Erica. Um, Derek has such a clean line um, and he's cartoony but still realistic if that makes any sense. A little bit like Mike Horrid but, but I think Derek's got a little bit more life to him. Sometimes I think Mike's work can be a little bit like, like a mannequin almost. Um, or I think Derek sort of now is the sort of like personality of the characters a little bit more with their facial expressions and general cartooning. Um, and he is someone I, I really look up to. He's he's able to do like big two work, so stuff on like Squirrel Girl. And I think he's I think he's drawing some like John Constantine young adult thing for DC. Which sounds mad, but that's written by Ryan North as well, I believe. Um, he, he's managed to like carve out this little like career for himself like doing stuff for that and then like big chunks on Archie uh, especially with Jughead um, and I'm like damn man I would like that career if I wasn't like really focused on doing my own stuff at the moment that would be the sort of thing that I was like, I'd be like yeah that could be a good path to go down. He's definitely worth a follow on Instagram. Post some really great stuff. I was looking earlier. He draws a really good Craven the Hunter. I think they both do. I think him and Erica draw a really amazing Craven the Hunter. It'd be interesting to see what Marvel do with um, Squirrel Girl, if they do anything with her. Um, it seems like a property that they shouldn't really let, like, lie for a little while. It'd be interesting to see, like, when all this clears up and comics can return to some sort of normality, if, if they will actually start pushing original graphic novels, if Marvel will start like going, okay, so we do a really good trade with kids comics in in like the bookstore market or scholastic market or whatever. And then they'll finally free these properties from the monthly comic grind and just let them like flourish in like original graphic novels. I mean, I, I doubt it, but who knows what new comic world we'll find ourselves in. Uh, Gav in the chat is talking about um, how fan art or fan fiction um, can often lead you to a job and that is that is a hundred percent true 
Um, the example he's given is uh, Emma Fischelli doing some stuff. Is it fan fan art or fan fiction? Uh, doing Life is Strange, which is a video game that I have not played. Um, yeah, and then she got offered the comic doing that. Yeah. I mean, I did an adventure. I did a bunch of Adventure Time fan art years and years ago in pencil. I would just scan them in. Um, essentially hoping for a job on the Adventure Time comic um, and getting paid the whole £2.50 that uh, <laughs> I would have got if I did that. Um, but nothing came of it. And then, like last year, Cartoon Network UK offered me a very quick job drawing um, just an A4 drawing of Adventure Time for some prize they were doing. Um, and that was great, so I, you know, I got, got some money out of it in the end. Um, the job itself was fine, I didn't realise how, like, I don't want to say anal, because, you know, it's their, they had a distinct look, they wanted it very much modelled on the show, but I was like, oh cool, I want to draw, like, in, in pencil, I want to do, like, a <laughs> I want to make this interesting and make it as, like, not off-brand, because I, I, don't, I don't draw you know, particularly off-brand when I work on these sort of characters, but I was like, oh, yes, draw it in, in, a, in a pencil and I can scan it in and do flat colour over it, but they were like, no, it has to be, like, e exact, exact to the show. Oh, they were talking about, like, the, the width of the, a, a sword that Finn has and uh, Jake's jowl, how it sort of... It was, it was the most notes I've ever had. Um, luckily, it was a very easy fix but it was yeah that's the, that's the job sometimes yeah uh, Johnny says fan art is only a good route if you think you can compete with literally 60,000 other dorks uh, Emma Vichelli is one of the most career driven creators and hardest workers I've ever met she does not let up she, she is someone who just keeps going um, not only with, like, work for hire stuff, but her own stuff. I mean, she's always doing, like, is her comics, her main comic that she does is, is Breaks. And I think she was even talking about starting that up again recently. Fan art and, like, work for hire is great. They're, they're, they're stuff that you can muck around in, but they're not excuse me, they're not the thing to sort of, like, bank your career on. Creator own is the, is the future. Um, which is why I wrote, <laughs> I wrote and found out a 10-page Chloe Noonan comic the other day. Yeah, possible third art for breaks indeed, uh, Gav says. Yeah, and she she does, I think she does self-publishing with them still. Um, when I self-published Elibisms, it was her, was it Dragonheart, her series? Her manga series? I think she was one, like one of the first people, her and the Sweat Drop uh, community would like do big collections of their, of their uh, comics. Um, so when it was time for me to collect elibisms, I, I, I hit Emma up and I was like, just please tell me all your secrets of self-publishing abroad. Um, she gave me the print that I used, uh, the, the exact contact, all the paper stock and everything. Well, I think Emma's books turned out a bit nicer. I'm not sure what I did wrong. Cool. Okay, I'm 
going to um, I'm going to wrap up the stream in a sec. So thank you for joining me. If you haven't already, please uh, smash that follow button because that will really help me in like go up a level on Twitch. So uh, if you do, that would be great. Uh, you can follow me on all the social medias. I'm at Mark Ellaby. Thanks for John Allison in the chat for keeping me occupied, keeping me, keeping my mind busy. Uh, you can find his comics in all good bookshops, including The Amazing Giant Days and Wicked Things number one. Uh, and Steeple. Steeple's out in May. I think I saw a Dark Horse post. Steeple's really good. Uh, Steeple.church <coughs> uh, is where you can read the Steeple webcomic. Um, I'm plugging John more than I'm plugging myself. Uh, you can uh, you can read my ebooks for free at the moment by Gumroad. Gumroad.com forward slash Mark Ellaby. You can leave a tip if you like there. You don't have to, but they, the ebooks are free uh, for about another uh, 10 days, I think. So. Definitely go and do that. Um, so yeah, I will be back on Thursday for another round of fan art, and then that will be it forever. No more fan art. Uh, and maybe next week there will be some Chloe Noonan uh, comics that I can draw uh, whilst um, entertaining the masses. So yeah, uh, Thursday at 4. See you then. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.